Now, this is a terrific, interesting story. Actors suppress their sense of self when playing a new character. And that is very true and also very, very interesting. Because the whole idea of acting is to lose yourself in the role. And that can have some dangerous consequences, as we will discuss in a moment. But the research published by the Journal of Cognitive Neuroscience suggests that when actors take on a new character, they may be able to suppress their everyday self. Of course, that makes sense, right? implying that theater training may have a big impact on the fundamental mechanisms of the human brain. Researchers worked in collaboration with a theater, and the team used wearable brain imaging to evaluate the brain activity of actors as they rehearsed. And the findings show that when the actors heard their own name during the performance, their response was suppressed in the left anterior prefrontal cortex of the brain, which is usually associated with self-awareness. The same result was witnessed consistently in sick actors who were also tested. Meanwhile, when performers were not in acting conditions, they responded normally to hearing their own name. The shout of a person's own name is powerful and compelling, which normally makes the subject turn their head. It also engages the prefrontal cortex of the brain. However, our findings suggest that actors may learn to suppress their sense of self as they train in the theater. And that is the idea of training in the theater. You are becoming an actor, you are becoming the role as an actor. This is the first time neuroscientists have been able to record brain activity in actors as they perform a role. We hope that this study will help us understand what theater training does to the brain and build new connections between neuroscientists and theater professionals. They also found that during rehearsals, there were similar activity patterns in the right anterior frontal gyrus and the right frontal polar cortex of the brains of two actors who were working together. These areas are associated with social interaction and action planning. The effects were specific to the brain data and were not seen in the heartbeat or breathing data, showing that there are specific brain systems that are coordinated during complex social interactions. I had always been interested in the changes that occur internally when we hear, speak, and even think about our own name as well as the names of those we have strong feelings toward. The scientific recognition that our physiological selves respond when we hear our names deepened my understanding of the sensory drama games I play with autistic individuals, especially those who are nonverbal. Now, the sample size was small, it needs to be repeated, but the idea that an actor <laughs> can lose oneself in a role and not recognize their own spoken name, their real life spoken name, is uh, both interesting and concerning. There are certain roles in the theater where actors have been known to lose themselves in not encouraging or positive ways. Two examples are Othello and Hamlet. And some people, when they play those roles, become so enmeshed in the drama and the hierarchy that they are sometimes a danger to themselves, that they don't know who they are because they lose themselves so severely in a character role. Now, a more modern example is that of Death of a Salesman and playing Willie Loman, the sad sack, grandiose salesman, played by many very interesting and terrific actors. And he spends all his life trying to be a salesman. And as his wife said, there was more of Willie in the front stoop than in all the sales he ever made. Meaning that he had 
created their stairs on the front stoop of the house. And it made a big difference to him. And selling meant nothing to him. And Philip Seymour Hoffman of the NYU acting program, a tremendously talented actor, was sort of known for losing himself in a role. And that can be a good thing or a positive thing. It can also be a very dangerous thing. And we're not saying that acting is what caused his death. But when he was playing Death of a Salesman on Broadway, the Willie Loman part, he became admittedly despondent and disconnected because that role is one of a universal longing to be something that you are not, to be greater than you are, to see your kids, those around you succeed while you continue to miserably fail. And if you are not succinct enough, if you cannot draw bright lines between the character and the real person, the real person can be dragged into the character and sunk. And there were reports that Philip was very depressed, had a hard time eight times a week, twice on Sunday, going on stage and playing Willie Loman. Because if you are in the role, and you are embedded in the role, and you cannot recognize your own name because you are so embedded in the role, and you are living the life of Willie Loman, the delightful loser, the guy who could never get ahead no matter what he did, day after day after day, and you don't have a proper release, and maybe you turn to drugs and other substances to assuage your suffering soul, you begin to wonder what happens to a person. What does it do to a mind? eight times a week to go on stage and be a betrayer, be loathed, be seeking for love, not find it, and then in the end committing suicide. It's a lot to ask of a person. And Death of a Salesman is one of the most interesting movies of the modern era. Movies, television, play of the modern era. And some people can't shake it. Other actors go out there, they do the thing, say the lines, effectively, big raves, go home. They're that person. Others do not quite have that talent to disconnect. And that is the danger of being an actor. Losing yourself so far into a role that you never recover yourself. Your ego has been replaced by a character. Your id has been supplanted by intention and stage direction. And when you leave the role and the show ends and you go home at night to face yourself in a mirror in the bathroom, you wonder who you are, where you are, and how do you fit into this world. And that can be a terrifying thought for a lot of people. And now we're taking our very next break. Returning in a moment. And we're going to talk about, oh, we're going to have some AI fun.